Welcome back. In this video, we'll design a menu that shows up when the game is over. Here you can see what it will look like. The game over menu displays the winning player or states that the game ended in a draw. You can also see the reason why the game ended. And then there are two buttons. This one starts a new game and the other one closes the application. The game over menu is semi-transparent, so you can still see any pieces that may be behind it. In upcoming parts, we'll also add two very similar menus, one for pawn promotion and one for restarting the game. Since all three menus are so similar, we begin by defining some common styles for all of them. Let's open app.saml. Here we define a few color resources first. We need a stroke color, a fill color, a text color, and a button color. Note that the fill color includes an alpha component, which makes it semi-transparent. You can use the same colors as me, or choose whatever you want. Our menus will all use a border as the top level control. So let's add a border style. I'll set the border thickness to 4. For the border brush, we'll use our stroke color. And for the background, we need the fill color. Finally, we'll set corner radius to 10. This will round the corners slightly. Next, we create a style for text blocks. All text blocks will have the same font. I'll use Segoi UI Lite. I also want the text to be centered both horizontally and vertically. And for the color, we'll use our text color.
Finally, we'll add a button style. For the font, we'll again use Segoe UI Lite. With font size 14. Next, I'll set border thickness to 2. Border brush to our stroke color. Background to the button color. And foreground to text color. Finally, I want rounded corners on the buttons. They don't have a corner radius property we can set directly, but we can set it on the underlying border. Perfect. Now we can design menus which look similar without writing the same code over and over. Let's create a new WPF user control for the game over menu. The layout for this menu consists of a border, I'll set its width to 275, and its height to 125. And let's apply our border style to it. Inside the border, we need a grid with three rows. For the top one, I'll set height to one star. The middle row gets half a star. And the bottom row gets one star. This distributes the available height such that the top and bottom rows get twice as much as the middle row. Next, let's add two columns for the buttons. We'll split the available width equally between them.
and I should probably increase the zoom in the designer so we can see what's going on. Okay, now we can add some controls. In the top row, we need a text block which spans both columns. Its purpose is to display the winner, so I'll call it winner text. And add some placeholder text. We'll also give it our text style. With a font size of 28. In the middle row, we need another text block. It should also span both columns. This text block will display the reason why the game ended. So let's call it reason text. And I'll put in a placeholder string. Again, we'll use our text style. This time with font size 16. Finally, we need two buttons. One to restart the game and one to exit the application. We begin with the restart button. It should be in the bottom row. and say restart. We'll give it the button style. And set its width to 80. And its height to 30. The other button is similar, so I'll copy paste this one. We just have to put it in the right column. And change the text to exit. We need to detect when the user clicks either of these buttons. So let's register event handlers for their click events. For the restart button, I'll call it restart click. And for the exit button, exit click. Note that because we've chosen custom names for the event handlers, instead of just pressing tab or enter, the event handlers are not also generated. To fix that, right click on the name and press go to definition. We'll do the same for the other event handler. Now you should have both restart click and exit click here in the code behind. All right, we are now done with the design of our game over menu. In the next part, we'll make it functional and put it on screen when the game ends. See you then.